Hi, everybody, and welcome to this Music Mentor Series webinar. Today, we're at Drum Channel Facilities right across the street from DW, and uh, we're, we're blessed to have uh, the founder of DW, Don Lombardi, here with us. Don, how, how's it going today? Thank you very much. I'm excited to be here. This is going to be a lot of fun for us. Uh, and I've got a little trivia history for you that I bet you don't know. In fact, I don't think anybody in this room knows it or out there. But um, one of my first inventions was the adjustable trap case seat. This is before pedals and we got into any DW hardware before I even bought Campco. Uh, but mid-70s, I walked into Guitar Center in Hollywood and uh, somebody had set me up with a meeting with the guy that worked at the drum department there. And as I was showing him this adjustable trap case seat, this gentleman walked out with cowboy boots and a hat on and said, uh, what, what you got there, son? And I said, what's an adjustable seat for drummers? And he said, well, well, we'll take one of those. And he was the founder of Guitar Center, Wayne Mitchell. And I think you had three or four stores back in those days. So we go way back. Yeah, that might have that been overselling it at three or four. We might have just had one or two, but uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, um, so we're here today talking about drum hardware. Um, and Don, so to just let, let, give us a little... Uh, a little rundown of what we're going to talk about today. Well, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to ask you a lot of questions, and uh, I'm going to ask you to give me some answers. And one of the answers I want you to give me is uh, a contest I thought we would have, which would be really fun. Um, the question is, I'm going to give you the question, actually, when we get going on pedals here in a few minutes. But what you could win is a DW9002 double pedal. Check that out. Uh, or you could win one of uh, all 10 packages, a 10-pack of Drum Channel DVDs, really cool, a $50 gift certificate card to Guitar Center. And uh, again, I'll get that question to you in just a few minutes. And we have some guests, some special guests coming uh, up. So yeah, do you want to talk about who our guests are real quick? I'll give them an inkling. Um, we have two gentlemen that are here with us, one who has an illustrious career um, spanning many years. Uh, not that many years, actually. He's much younger than I am. But um, think about Mick Jagger, um, people that he's played with, Sir Elton John, uh, the Dixie Chicks. I mean, his discography goes on and on and on. Mr. Pocket, Kurt Pascara, will be here with us. And we have a younger gentleman who is at the beginning of his recording career. He has a new box set CD, DVD out. In fact, the only place you can get it is exclusively at Guitar Center right now, Kobus Potgitter. And I kept his kit set up. Uh, he's the most viewed drummer on YouTube. Uh, with over 140 million views, um, uh, has an amazing career ahead of him. And when you hear him play, which you're going to get to be able to do at the end of the show, I talked him into playing one of the tracks off of his uh, new CD. So That's it's, awesome. Yeah, it's not going to be a total geek head gear night all night. We're going to have a little bit of grooving on uh, for here and there, too. But I am very concerned that we're not going to get everything in, so I'm kind of ready to get, get started. Also, if they have any questions, they can go to the chat and ask us any questions. You can ask, the, ask through the chat, or you can email info at drumchannel.com to submit questions, and we'll do, we'll do our best to get them answered. So without further ado... Um, I would say tweet us, Facebook, text your friends, uh, go old school. Take that thing and actually call somebody and talk to them and get them to come on and check out what we're going to be doing tonight, because I think you're going to learn a lot. And I thought we would start by... Uh, this might be one of the most important messages of the whole webinar, actually. Um, a little insight as to what is Drum Workshop. I started Drum Workshop in a really small building about the size of a single car garage with 60 students back in 1972, and then shortly after that got into manufacturing. But one of the things I really loved about teaching was the ability to motivate and inspire students by giving them new techniques, showing them how to play things faster, and of course giving them new things to play. And when we got into manufacturing, I did it for the exact same reason. We used the best quality materials, come out with really cool new designs that'll help you play faster. And we come out with new inventions all the time that will help motivate and inspire you and give you new things to play. And you know, a lot of you younger drummers out there probably didn't know that we pioneered the chain drive pedal, the double pedal, the two-legged hi-hat, um, the remote hi-hat, and the list goes on and on. Things that you would really take for granted today. I also think it's really important that we're an American company. You know, the bass drum pedal itself is an American invention, if you look back into the early 1900s. And the drum set itself is an American invention. Today, I think you're going to learn a lot of things about our pedals and our stands and our accessories. Uh, and it's important for you to know that we're not just a drum company that makes pedals. We're a company that is really in two parts. Drum Workshop, of course, has DW drums, and Drum Workshop has DW pedals, stands, and accessories. 
And it's a compliment to us, I think, that not only do all of our artists play DW drums uh, that endorse DW, but we have a whole bunch of the best drummers in the world who also endorse our pedals and our hardware. Uh, and that means a lot to us. When you come and visit us, which I hope you're able to do, we're here in Oxnard, California, uh, one day, you're gonna go through these doors. And one of the first things you're gonna see, and you can follow me in, is our mission statement. Of course, you can go to dwdrums.com uh, and you can read the complete mission statement and get the whole history of Drum Workshop. But if I had to sum it up in just two lines, to supply drummers with percussion products made of the highest quality design, materials, and craftsmanship, to educate, enhance, and help unify the drumming community. That's what DW is all about. That's what DW is all about. And I'm here with Kirky B. Yes, sir. Thank you. You've been with us for how many years as a DW uh, artist? Let's see, I got signed on in 1992. Whoa. I'm horrible at math. So ah. uh, what is that? <laughs> a gajillion years. And odd it's times, a, too? Is that a problem? <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> well, like I told my, uh, my, um, my math teacher, you know, I was failing the class, obviously, and uh, told him I only wanted to count to four, but really well. Uh, and th you did that really well, by the way, too. <laughs> Here's some questions I thought that we would answer as the evening's going on, and all I'll right. just kind of pose them now, and then you can jump in with any ideas okay. you have as we're talking uh -huh. about all this mirage of products we have back here. Uh, what bass drum pedal should you be playing? I think I'm prejudiced there, so I don't think we have to you know, yeah, talk no about that need too much. To even uh, talk about that. But what model pedal should you be playing? That's something that'll be fun to find out. If you want to add an extra cymbal to your drum set, should you put it on a cymbal stand or you should get some clamps? How do you figure out how to do that? Um, have you ever thought of adding, have you ever thought of adding a functioning tambourine pedal to your drum set? I have not, and I had no idea that those things even exist. Well, <laughs> let me correct you, <laughs> truly, sir. Truly. Uh, we have something to show you. This is great. If you know a drummer who doesn't have a Christmas present, it's very rare that you're going to be able to find something that you know they don't have. Uh, anyway, that'll be a little secret for you coming up uh, a little bit. Um, what if you wanted to uh, add a pedal, kind of get into the Terry Bozio-esque thing, and put a pedal that would allow you to play ostinatos that the beater would come up underneath the floor tom? Have you ever seen that? Have you no, seen it before today? I, I No. Okay. I, have, I heard about it. I've never seen it. Okay. We're going to, for the first time ever, I'm going to put you on a drum set right. that, that, that has, right. it, uh, has it there. And uh, I think we got to get started with pedals. Yeah, let's thought, do it. Let's start exactly where I got started uh, way back in the day. And let's ask Daniel Glass um, to ask the question. Uh, who could tell me what made a drum set a drum set? The low boy, the sock symbol. I, I'm not sure. Maybe the, the, the kick pedal? Uh, you needed a pedal. Foot pedal? I would guess the foot pedal. And the correct answer to the question is the bass drum pedal. Now, when were the first bass drum pedals created? Well, we don't really actually know. There's pictorial evidence going back to as early as 1840 that's so a crude foot operated device. Believe it or not, 1840. Uh, no, I did not invent the pedal in 1840. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this was more uh, 1977 version. This is one of the first pedals that DW made, and this was made uh, directly out of the castings and moles, the way the pedal was made by our predecessor, Campco. And the first thing we did when we got it was start to improve it, and we haven't mm -hmm. stopped even until today. Uh, tons of things that we're doing uh, on, the, on the bass drum pedal, and, and most of the ideas we get come from players for all of our hardware and our, our products mm -hmm. line. You have suggestions. Absolutely. What, what if you could do this? What if you could do that? Uh, I thought we would start at the bottom of the pedal. Let's take a look at uh, the 5,000 pedal as it exists today. I'll, I'll kind of put them next to each other. Obviously, there's, there's a huge difference. Uh, not only a difference as a result of the technique that drummers are using today because they're playing so much faster. And uh, I'd like to think that the design of the pedal and the fluidity of it is one thing that's allowed drummers to find other ways in order to approach the bass drum, constant release motion, heel down, molar method ideas. We keep all that in mind when we think about how we're designing the pedal. Starting from the bottom up, the original bass drum pedal, bass drum pedals through the years, had the, the footboard completely independent of the casting up front. So we thought something that needed to be done, and we're the first company that actually connected the base plate heel of the pedal to the castings of the pedal with a plate. Um, and these are little things, but 
you could use a steel plate. It would just make the pedal much heavier. It would mm -hmm. be much less expensive for us to use that. Or a really high premium grade aluminum plate. So uh, if you're checking out pedals out there, you know, and it is an aluminum plate, you want to be sure that it's made out of the best possible material so it doesn't bend under, under stress. And the other thing, this is cool. Uh, one way you can make a hinge on a pedal is simply, or a door hinge on your door, or a hinge, hinge that's a hinge, it's a hinge, mm -hmm. uh, is just by taking two pieces <clears throat> and linking them together with a pin. And that's the way a lot of pedals are produced. Um, we took a look at one of the areas of the bass drum pedal that, that creates the most friction, which is going to be what's moving the most, really, the shaft and pedal board. the pedal board and the heel, right, and the hinge, the hinge that connects the footboard to the heel. Uh, instead of just saying we're going to take two parts, in order to put a heel together with the footboard, here's what we come up with. Have you ever looked at your hinge exploded? All the parts that it takes to actually make a hinge on a DW wow. pedal? Ball bearings, it's the only pedal with ball bearings, because we have a, a patent on that, with ball bearings in the hinge of the pedal. That's why it's so smooth. Then we have to deal with all the different designs, concentric cam, eccentric cam, uh, the ball bearings we use in the shaft, we're going to get into the 9,000 pedal in just a minute, which has an even different feel from mm -hmm. the 5,000. But I just want to point out, as, as a, for instance, some of the, you know, the things we go to in order to get the pedal. As a drummer, you don't think about that. You, know? uh, you don't Never. You just it. want it to feel good. Yeah. How does your pedal work? Does it feel good? Right. And at the end of the day, that's all you want is a pedal that, that feels good and lasts. That's the other big key. Um, I remember early on, um, Tommy Lee took our pedal out and said that uh, in a nine-month tour, I got a call from Clyde, his drum tech, and he said, I can't believe we've used the same pedal on the whole tour. And I'm thinking like, well, I would think so, because that's, you know, you took one of our pedals out. I can't expect it's going to break. He said, no, no, we used to go through five or six pedals, you know, in that same length of time. So wow. key is to, to make it feel like the old pair of slippers, but make it really hold up like a tank. Um, one of the other areas early on that we changed from the original design I showed you is we have ball bearings in the rocker and we upgraded the, uh, the 5000 with a feature of the 9000 where we actually have a rotating spring hinged at the bottom of the casting also. And what that means is you're going to get less spring tension until you get close and less spring tension until you get back. So it gives you a little bit more area for float in the pedal. And the 5000 pedal, these are features on the 5000 and the 9000 pedal. The difference between the 5000 and the 9000 pedal is that the 5000 uh, has two cam versions, the concentric and the eccentric cam. This is the perfectly round cam, and this is a cam that is slightly more forward. It's eccentric, and why do you think that is? I have no idea. Uh, okay, see, you're, so you're in school today. Um, <laughs> yes, I am. Th think, think about this. Um, if you were to have a completely round cam, it would be like pulling a rope off of a pulley, off of a completely round pulley. Uh, if you were to have it slightly eccentric, as this comes up, it pushes the chain out. And if the chain goes out, what happens to the footboard? It comes up. Uh. So the footboard is actually moving slightly faster than the relationship of the hex shaft. So you're getting a little bit more throw at the back and a little lighter feel up front. Mm -hmm. So when you're feathering the pedal up here, playing singles, doubles, especially for sliding technique, uh, this eccentric cam is about 80% of our sales. So trying to help you decide when you go into a store uh, in terms of looking things that you might be interested in. Uh, the 9000 pedal differs from the 5000 pedal in two key ways. One, we have a patent on the fact that the actual hex shaft, this is the shaft, which is round in the case of the 9000 pedal, is completely independent of the beater. You can hold the beater and roll the shaft, and this is the only pedal in the world that will allow you to do that. Uh, and we're doing that by actually taking the spring, instead of hooking it up to the shaft on the side of the pedal, we're hooking it up right to your beater ball. It's like taking a toe a uh, string around your toe and hooking it up to the beater. I mean, it's all, you can't get more direct than this, and you can't have less resistance in a pedal than this. Um, now, it's opinionated. You know, it depends sure. on where, where your technique is and what you want to use. Uh, Vinnie Caliuta loves the 5,000. Steve Smith, the 9,000. Can't play anything else. Um, so you've got to kind of sit down and try them and test them out. 
Something that you can do on the 9000 pedal, which is also really cool, uh, you know the eccentric, concentric cam, whether it's round or whether it's a little bit off round, you can actually, with the turn of a drum key screw, take and decide whether you want this cam to be in or out. It moves in and out. Can you see that? It moves in and out as you would turn a drum key here while you're actually playing. So you can On play it and kind of tweak it and see kind of <clears throat> where, you know, where you want it. Mm -hmm. Now, here is... Uh, something that's people really don't understand the importance of this next feature and it's a new one too the toe clamp you've seen it you've had yes. it on your pedal yes aside from the fact that it will conform to any size bass drum hoop because there's three different pivot points one two three again this is another patented device of uh, of dw pedals as you clamp the hoop on it will conform itself to a 16 inch hoop or a 24 inch hoop so it takes very little pressure in order to clamp it uh, but the coolest thing is, you're then taking all of the stress, you're taking the fulcrum point off of the clamp between the spurs of the pedal and the back of the plate. Any pedal with a plate is going to also have the possibility, especially if it's an uneven surface, of the plate bouncing a little bit. You probably all realize that if you have pedals with plates on them. This completely eliminates that. So how it improves, I try to do everything we can to improve, you know, uh, the, the drummer's technique to give them the possibility of feeling more in touch. This is really a, one of the most important instruments of your entire drum set. This is the connection between you, you know, here's, I'm Absolutely. preaching to the choir, Absolutely. between you and the time field that is yeah. you, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think when you sit down and you, and you play your pedal, you know, you want to pretend it's not there. You, it's just, you're hearing what you're hearing as a result of, what it's doing, but you're feeling Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And we're Absolutely. talking to, to Mr. Groove here. So this is a this is a really important feature. Again, another patented feature uh, on the pedal. Um, and we have a question for you that I talked about at the beginning, and I said I would get into it when we were getting into our pedals. And here it is. Let's hear it. Okay. How many patents has DW been granted? And if you give us the answer at info at drumchannel.com. Go to info at drumchannel.com and give us a number. And one of those prizes, the first place prize, the DW9002 double pedal, uh, the 10 DVD pack, or uh, the $50 gift card, you have a chance to win that. I'll let you know at the end of the show. Any guesses? No, don't guess. You can't. You can't. You couldn't, you couldn't. <laughs> I think I know the, no, I yeah, don't you know could, the answer. Technically, you couldn't, couldn't win anyway. So the 9000 pedal and the 5000 pedal are, you know, the flagships. The double pedal, obviously, every one of our pedals comes in a single and a double. The key yeah. to the double pedal is this. It's the universal assembly. I, I loosened this to take it apart because I wanted to hold this and show you. We're going to go over a little bit later and visit where we make the parts uh, for the pedals, uh, on, which is right across the way in, in the building where we have our right. machine shop. But uh, you'll see that you know, we actually make the universals. They're very precise, depending on whether you're looking for a 9,000 pedal or a 5,000 pedal, and depending on your budget, which is important too, especially today. Uh, we also have a 3,000 series pedal, uh, which is available in the single and double pedal too. Uh, as a lot of the a lot of the features of the 5000, we're able to offer it at a little bit lower price um, because we don't have some of the adjustability on it that those pedals have. And then if you show up at the gig and what happens? Uh, there's a DJ there and the band's not playing anymore, right? They're your tight budget. Yes. What do we have to say about DJs? Uh, we love them, but they shouldn't be replacing bands, right? Right. Uh, yeah. You don't have to go, but you got to get the hell out of here, as they would say. <laughs> uh, there's the 2000 pedal, which is also available. And it's a great way, uh, inexpensively, to get into a double pedal and get your hands on a, a DW product at the same time. Also in the PDP line, and you'll see that when we get into all the stands, um, we have another price point of products, which we put a lot of our design concepts into, and we call it the concept pedal, which is another one to look at. It has a slightly longer footboard, as does the new 9000. We have a new 9000 also, if you can go over there, which has yeah. the XF extended footboard. And uh, that's for drummers who are looking for, yes, a little bit uh, more resistance and more throw, uh, but still totally buttery, lightweight feel. For the big foot drummer. It's, uh, yes, right. Uh, or somebody who's looking at, you know, really sliding, you know, great distance. Some of the blast beat guys really like what we're doing here with this pedal. And I thought pedals were, you know, something we would make when, when I kind of perfected the double pedal and Jim Keltner brought 
one he had been playing to me, and I, it, it was his Elmer twin, and I just saw a big need for somebody you know, mm -hmm. to make that a little bit better. Again, we're the first company to put a uh, chain and sprocket on a bass drum pedal and mass produce it. That I was doing almost anything or everything that somebody would do with pedals until right, I right. met you know who, and we took a look at his drum <laughs> set. Uh, and I thought maybe it would be fun right now while we uh, switch and go on to, uh, to Kurt over behind the drum set and right. look at some of our hi-hats also next that we take a quick look at uh, what Mr. Bozio is doing. Watch this. Check it out. We're going to start by just showing you all the different pedals and sounds that I have. So to begin with, uh, the far one on the left is a cymbal mounted on a bass drum pedal. Then I have a wood tambourine. And I have a jingle stick with some sleigh bells on the beater ball. Then I have a normal tambourine with some little 10 inch hats. Or maybe they're eight. Then a Middle Eastern tambourine here. And then I have a gong. I have a piccolo tong uh, with some castanets as a sound enhancer. And that's roughly tuned to a D. Then I have a wood-headed djembe over here with some almond butter caps as a sound enhancer. I have a 16-inch bass drum, which is tuned to an F. Uh, my left hi-hat here has this prototype piece, which I just call the clacker. Then uh, we have a left 22-inch bass drum, which is tuned to a C. A spokes hi-hat up here with a little factory metal jingle on it. Then uh, a normal hi-hat with some uh, compression hats on there. My left 20-inch bass drum, my main left kick, is tuned to a G. Have a little prototype metal thing here. Then next we have this uh, right side prototype metal thing. Just a second, let me run sure. over there. So this is the right side prototype metal thing. Then we have the right 20 inch bass drum which is tuned to an E. And then a remote bass drum 24 tuned to an A. Uh, watch your ears there, we're gonna go up to this uh, China hi-hat. remote China hi-hat, then a remote 20-inch bass drum tuned to a D, a remote 18-inch bass drum tuned to an E, an octave above, and then finally a remote 22-inch bass drum tuned to a B. And that's my setup. Never try to play all of these at once. Where are you? <laughs> uh, I would advise you not to be able to play all those at once also. This is uh, a myriad, again, I could spend a lot more time than this going through all the features and all the time we put into, uh, I think, perfecting these products. But I wanted to go through and give you a, a quick idea of what we have. And you'll see from our hi-hats and then we move quickly through our stands um, how we have different weights, but we still keep the same quality of manufacturing. And there's some uh, things that we do that really, you know, I think set us apart. Uh, the 9000 hi-hat is, uh, obviously would go along with the 9000 series pedals. Big, uh, it has the ball bearing hinge, the patented ball bearing hinge. Uh, we were the first company to come out with a two-legged hi-hat. Once I perfected the double pedal and we started selling it, obviously the next thing was you had one of the legs of your hi-hat the, in the way. Uh, so I made the leg assembly so it would rotate on a three-leg hi-hat. But then the thought was, why not put a plate on the hi-hat like we put a plate on the pedal and make a hi-hat with two legs, which would allow you to have the double pedal and the remote hi-hat. Because that's what uh, Vinny played for years and years, and, and a lot of drummers still use that. We call it our, our triple pedal setup where you have your regular hi-hat, your double pedal, and your remote hi-hat, in which case you can't have a third leg and rotate it and, and get it out of the way. So um, big thing with the, with the 9000 series hi-hat is the uh, action of the direct pull on the footboard. I talked about that concentric cam thing on the pedal where it actually moves the chain a little bit faster 
than the actual footboard's moving. We have the same action here on the hi-hat by having a double cam chain, which we did so it would be pulling evenly on both sides. Uh, and it, it, it has a, a, a footboard action where you're actually moving the rod a little quicker than what the footboard is actually moving. So it could be a little bit lighter feel if you really want that, you know, a, a slushy, floating, bouncing feel with your hi-hat. And the neat thing is, too, when you fold it up, the same thing with the 5,000 and the 9,000 hi-hat, uh, we came up with a patented way that you could take the stress off of the spring because the footboard actually slides up as you fold up the hi-hat. So that's the 9,000, 9,500 hi-hat. Um, the 5,500 hi-hat and the 5,000 series, you know, hi-hats and stands kind of have become the standard of the industry. Uh, the 9000 series stand is definitely the standard of the industry when it comes to, to cymbal stands. The 5000 hi-hat is a little bit smaller tube size, uh, but has a lot of the same features. has a direct pull with a chain on it. Um, when I was uh, putting a chain on the bass drum pedal, the thought occurred to me, why not put a chain on a hi-hat also and make it direct pull? It was one of the first hi-hats. I think there was a hi-hat in France that also had a, a chain on it that I'd seen once, but it uh, was one of the first uh, mass-produced hi-hats that actually had a chain, uh, which made sense because the links in the chain are going to offset the pull of the rod. So the idea is you want to try and pull it direct as much as you can. Then it gets into where are you, what is your gigging patterns. Uh, we now have in our cymbal stands, which you'll see, and in the hi-hats, the uh, 7500, and the cool thing with that is it's a single brace stand, and, and the tubing's getting a little bit smaller kind of as we, as we go down the line. Um, same thing, you have adjustable spring tension, obviously, on all of our hi-hats. I wouldn't put one out unless it, I wouldn't put one out unless it had that. Uh, and then uh, one of my babies here is the uh, 6500. Uh, this is a lightweight hi-hat, took us years to perfect how to do this and have a direct pull and uh, a hi-hat that would be really lightweight and portable and able to fold up. And something that the stands have, which I'll show you, is the ability to have the legs actually go over themselves because that was always a problem with all the flesh-based stands throughout uh, history. So this is our 6500. And again, if you're on a budget, um, we have down spec a little bit, but still great quality. We have a 3000 series stand. And, and I feel really good because when I'm saying we have things at a little bit lower price, um, they're very much uh, quality-wise as good as any stand you would buy from anybody. So, you know, you really want to look into what you can put into your budget and the amount of value that you can get out of the money that you're spending. Uh, so this, uh, go on to dwdrums.com and you'll be able to see, you know, uh, all this all over again and live with it. Um, and pick the stand that kind of not only has the feel that you're looking for, but maybe is the size and the weight of, uh, of what you're looking for. Um, and then there's, you know, another specialty pedal that I kind of wanted to get in and talk to you about uh, a little bit. And I thought maybe uh, we could have Kurt come over and sit on the cajon here for a second. Uh, so if you have a cajon, uh, please have a seat. I mean, play a little bit. I mean, you're, you're in the cajon, right? Uh, I guess when there's one around. Okay. Okay. Now, okay. Here's the now. Here's the, here's the next trick. Have, have a seat. Okay. Okay. Now I'd like to feed us. Uh, we got the cajon track down, right? Now okay. Play a little tambourine for me. Just, just some tambourine. Just the tambourine track. Hey, Mr. Tambourine. Oh. Okay. Now the trick is. Okay. Uh, I'm leading up to something okay. here. Okay. So this is a real orchestrated bit. All right. Okay. Now the trick is, I want you to please play tambourine. We're live now, right? So we've got the track done, but we're in front of people now, the oh singers God. out there. I want you to play tambourine and cajon all at the same time. That's a no can do. Okay. I guess you can you, cheat you, and do that. You can't do it because every cajon player needs a tambourine pedal. Okay, I'd like to talk just a little bit about the pedal itself, the tambourine pedal, and how it works and 
give you a little info. First of all, it's a DW pedal, and they're the best in the world at pedals. So you've got a great DW pedal here that you can take the tambourine and the uh, rubber bumper right off. The rubber bumper attaches to the to the toe to the bass drum clamp down here. You just take it all right off, and you put a new beater hub that comes with the tambourine pedal. Put the beater hub on the pedal, and you've got a great working DW pedal that you can use on your acoustic kit, your electronic kit, whatever you want. I use this pedal every gig I play, and it's just a dream come true to have it finally a reality. Hey, here we are, um, hiding behind the snare drum. I uh, want to give you a quick uh, entree into just two of our, uh, our snare stands. Again, we have snare stands in every weight, just like I showed you with the hi-hats. Um, and we have a, a really uh, clever one here. Uh, it's, it's got a, a real trick to it. Uh, and this is the same looking snare stand. And one of the things that's cool about it, I think, is that, you know, one of the most sensitive adjustments you have on your kit is the angle of your snare drum. So you can just lock it in, uh, and it has a tech lock on it like our cymbal stands do. It's offset. The idea of having an offset snare stand, and I believe we were the first ones who ever did that, again, when we developed the double pedal and came out with it, it brought up a whole bunch of questions and concerns that drummers were having, and that the linkage was getting in the way of the legs of their snare stand. So we had to make one that kind of went out to pretend that your legs were in a little bit closer, but they'd still miss the universal and still clear uh, where you wanted to have them underneath the tom-toms. So check out all of our snare stands, and this one in particular, take a look at this. I'm going to do something that's pretty uh, ghostly. Uh, this is uh, one of our heavier snare drums, and I'm going to loosen up the stand right now. And uh, without the memory lock, it doesn't... <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Biscara. Drum roll, please. Da -da -da -da. Then what you can do with one hand is just adjust whether you want to have it go up or down and adjust the angle of it at the same time. So from a sitting position, you can get it exactly where you want it and then tighten it back up. We do that by having a hydraulic cylinder here underneath the stand. Um, and this is something that studio drummers have fallen in love with. Uh, yes. Because, yes, Mr. Kurt's saying that behind me. Yes, yes. Uh, and Peter Erskine, who I thought, you know, was you know, pretty much into his traditional stand, loved it also. Um, gets rid of the blood blisters. How many blood blisters have you had? I've, I've counted a few Too in my many. day. <laughs> Too many. I don't get them anymore. I'm going to be the cameraman here, and real quickly, we're going to show you some fun things that we have on uh, the drum set that Kurt's playing. Why don't you play a little bit, and I'll run back there and grab the camera. Okay. This thing. What do you think about that? Play it again. I Let love me show exactly this thing. what's happening there. Instant bebop kit. Love it. So what you've got is a uh, a pedal that hits up underneath your floor tom, <laughs> yeah. uh, and it kind of gets you into what ostinatos and things you could do with Terry. Yes, without having to add sort of. Other, add, add any, without having to add any other drums to your kit, which I think is pretty, I love pretty, it. pretty, pretty cool. And my uh, first time playing it, by the way, so I'm really just floored by it. And I might have to take this one home after this is over. Well, I'll, I'll keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on the door there. <laughs> uh, quickly, let's go through a couple of other things, okay. which I think a lot of people might know about, but some of the younger kids might not know about. Um, again, we have a patent on the way our remote hi hat works. And the key is that you can have a functioning hi-hat on uh, the other side of your drum set. 
and it works with a drop lock clutch where once you get it set where you want it, you have those symbols so they stay closed, so it's like a fixed hi-hat, or as soon as you put your foot down on the hi-hat, it locks that clutch into place and you're back operating with a functional hi-hat again. Um, spent a lot of years developing the cable that goes with the drop lock, uh, I mean it goes with the uh, remote hi-hat. And that's one of the keys to the success of that pedal, why it feels so good. Um, there's actually three different components we buy from three different companies to put wow. that together. It's not, a, a, not an off-the-shelf cable, and that's really important when you're looking at adding that tone color to your kit. Mm -hmm. Another idea of adding a tone color to your kit is uh, a regular fixed hi-hat, which a lot of people have, but it's not really uh, a musical device unless you can adjust the tension of it from your playing position. You do that by just turning that clutch. Check it out. So even in the middle of a song, you could adjust the tension of, of that hi-hat. I dig that you had this thing so you could kind of stick control it just Yeah, by that's, a... that's the reason why we yeah, did that. Yeah, love it. Love. Love. And there's detents inside or on this thing, right? So you could actually click it into, into place. Yeah, it, it'll stay cool. in place. It'll stay wherever you actually have yeah, it I love solidified. It. Love, love, love. And if you want to put symbols on top of symbols, we have the symbol stacker. Like voila, uh, four inch or six inch. Or, or you can do some little tricky things between the two of them, kind of feather them there. There you go, there you go. And uh, these are kind of eclectic things that you might not know are in the catalog. Uh, when you pack up your hi-hat, you want to get oh. out of there. My favorite thing on the kit. You like this, and you just I, found out about this. I just found out the other day that this thing actually exists. So what happened? So you got your hi hat. Now what do you have to do normally? You're going to okay, take. Okay, normally it. you would flip it over and unscrew that bottom. Take it apart. Okay, so you'd normally do this. Right. Okay. Right. But now you don't have to do that. Now you don't have to do that. All, All you have do, to do take it is apart. this. Voila, and you can pack okay, it voila. up. Voila. So it's a slip fit. It's a slip fit. And, and the thing that we did that uh, changes it uh, in design is to allow it to be adjustable so that you can take out the tolerances that you might have on that slip fit. The same thing is true with the clutch on the uh, remote hi-hat also. You never have any slop in there because you can have a little uh, Allen wrench and you can adjust the, the, the degree of, of pressure or play that you yes. have on the clutch with the, with the stand. Great. So this is just to mention a few things that we have that people might not know about. When it comes to putting a symbol someplace on your stand, yes, you could put another symbol stand here, or you could get a combination of uh, one of our dog bones, dog we call bones. them, and, uh, and, a, and a symbol arm. Um, I was simply looking at, I'll never forget the day that John walked by my office, and he said, are you okay? I said, what do you mean? He says, you're just staring at the wall. And I said, no, I'm looking at that symbol stand. I was thinking, if you take the top of the symbol stand, which holds the boom arm, and you put another top on it and another boom arm on that, you could put a whole bunch of things off of your cymbal stand. <laughs> and uh, it kind of worked at the end of the day. Uh, it sure does. And we have, uh, well. yeah, I would, we have clamp systems, we have clamp holders, parts and accessories. You've got to go to uh, dwdrums.com and you can click out. There's a whole section there that'll help you figure out how you can deck out your kit and where you want to put everything. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it might be fun right now to go over Two, uh, a little bit earlier, I went over and filmed the, the factory where we right. actually make some of these things. Yeah, let's check that out. And uh, you can see one of the real secrets to the quality, because I think quality comes down to people and the amount of time that they've been doing what they're doing uh, and the fact that you know, we have kind of a real family here and we're all wanting to do just what our mission statement said, improve the quality of a drummer's life. Uh, let's take a look at what we did over there and uh, see where we make them. Hi, my name is Ildefonso Arambula, and I start with uh, Dan and John on August 10, 1978. Hi, hi, I'm Guillermo Arambula, I started in uh, 1979. Hi, I'm Enrique Arambula, I've been making DW pedals uh, since 1988. Hi, my name is Isabel Avila, I've been w working DW pedals for 26 years. Rodrigo Vasquez, 21 years. Emilia Arambula, 18 years. Sylvia Arambula, 18 years. Hi, my name is Hena Arambula. I'm working for DW for uh, 25 years. And I started to make uh, 
BWFs. It's a great team we have here, and I'm with a key member of the team, Rich Secret. And how long have you been making parts for DW Pedals? We've actually been working together over 23 years now. It's hard to believe. And Rich is a key member of our R&D team here at DW. A lot of the parts that you're going to see us talking about, he's improved and invented, and a lot of the complete products. You came to Los Angeles back in the day and went to MI. Went to MI. He's, he's, Kurt. A, he's a very good drummer, as a matter of fact. Thank you. We're talking about pedals uh, over in the studio. This is one of the secrets to what makes DW pedals uh, the quality pedal that they are. And it has to do with all the parts. I would say uh, there's probably over 60 and over 120 parts between the single and the double pedal. And believe it or not, what we do is we sit here, Rich spends a lot of his day looking at these individual parts and figuring out ways that we can improve them. And it's the quality of the material that we use and the degree of uh, tolerances that we use exactly. in every moving part of the pedal that really separates us from everybody else. Yeah, that's true. I think you hit the nail on the head with constantly improving the products, e either with material or tolerances. This is, you know what this is? This is your universal off of your double pedal. Uh, it's made right here in our machine shop. I'm going to have Rich take you into the machine shop, and on the way getting into there, uh, you're going to hear this thump, thump, thump going on, which is our... Our pedal tester. We try to break the parts here so you're not breaking them out on the road. If we see anything that seems to wear too quickly, we fix it. So you'll see that in a minute. It's pretty exciting. I'm going to join you back in the studio with a lot more fun things to show you. And why don't you take them on a quick tour through the machine shop. All right. Sounds good. Okay. I'll show you our pedal tester here on the left. This is pretty exciting because, uh, like I said, we can find out if something's going to break before it breaks for the customer. So check this out. Let me take you into the machine shop. So we have several CNC machines here on the right. They're computer-operated machinery. A lot of components for the pedals are made on these machines. Over to your left here, we have uh, our machinist. He's actually doing some prototype work for us. So we also have some really old machines, but these are made mainly to make the smaller components on the pedals. Let me take you in to show you some of these. Yeah, let's take it back to Don over the studio. Before we go back to the studio, I wanted to pop into the DW showroom here. I know there's a couple things set up. A uh, practice kit and a really, really cool clamp that really solves a major problem that drummers have had forever. I know we could spend all afternoon in here. Let me show you on the bass drum here. Uh, a clamp is designed to hold a cowbell, which has been a problem for us Forever. I've never seen a drummer have a, a clamp that hooks onto his hoop that really is solid for either holding a cowbell or if you've got a double bass drum kit holding your, uh, your legless hi-hat. And this one does it. It's a, a unique clamping device which is kind of like a claw hook that nests the hoop inside of the clamp. So you can tighten it up rock solid. Uh, we even sell these with spurs so you can put them on the hoops of your bass drum. Uh, you could put a cymbal arm coming off of it. Uh, it really is a solution to a major problem drummers have had forever and that's the fun thing you know we're always looking for solutions uh, over here is our go anywhere practice pad kit I spent a uh, couple years working on uh, developing this and we have a, a patent on it the idea is to get an inexpensive practice kit that will go anywhere thus we call it the go anywhere practice kit and this particular one has two uh, accessories which is a separate accessory pack you might not know about thousands of drummers have these and when I had one at my house, it was always like, where did I put the sticks? You know, that's the big thing. So simple, dumb thing, but a little uh, inexpensive holder that'll hold the sticks here, so you've always got them with you. And I also put a uh, music stand adapter on it, so you don't have to have a separate stand. So it really is condensed into a uh, small space. And if you're backstage, you know, and you're not working with drum techs, and you don't have really a backstage room, uh, or you're playing clubs, 
This is an even more compact way of going anywhere and practicing. And we worked on the design of this with Steve Smith. Uh, it's his practice pad, which slips onto your knee. So you'll see him. We call it backstage because he uses it whenever he's backstage. And as simple as it looks, um, there was a lot of thought that went into the design of this so it would fit and be really comfortable. Then he has his bass drum practice pad, also the Steve Smith bass drum practice pad. Uh, really, really rock solid. Uh, we use a similar design this for holding uh, cowbells and Latin percussion accessories. The fun thing about this, how it folds up, obviously it functions really well and it's really solid, but I had to think of a way, and I couldn't come up with anything other than having this fold over the beater attachment and then go back down so it sits completely flush when you take this out. Or you can even just fold that down like that. So it fits right into your case. Really cool. Um, Steve Smith, uh, bass drum practice pad, Steve Smith knee pad, go anywhere practice pad kit, and we have a whole series of practice pads. This is one that uh, I really like. It has two playing surfaces on it. So uh, when you're practicing rudiments, uh, you want to get them as even as you can, but it's always fun to put one hand on a different sounding surface so you can hear how they're each sounding. You can hear which one is getting a little bit off. Obviously, if you're having trouble increasing your speed, one of your two hands is slowing down. So you can always use the hand that's doing it faster to kind of teach the hand that's doing it a little bit slower. And this pad allows you to do that. Plus, you can turn it over, and it's got another whole playing surface on the back. And we do have a whole series of practice pads uh, that will quiet a complete drum set, pads that go on every single drum, uh, including the bass drum. So you can take your acoustic kit and turn it into a practice kit almost instantly. Anyways, that's a few things I wanted to show you in here. Hard to be in this room uh, and not, you know, look at the drums and talk about them for two seconds. Of course, the Collector Series drums, your dream drum set. The Performance Series, same quality and craftsmanship as the Collector Series, but we make it in uh, less choices of colors and sizes, which makes it more affordable. And in the back, we've got a big Design Series kit, brand new. Uh, some special videos that we shot on that one coming up uh, that you'll be able to see with Tony Royster playing on it. And uh, if that is even out of your price range, for half the price of that, you have a Concept Maple Kit with Pacific. Uh, so anyways, you've got a whole bunch you can watch here on, uh, on the DW website about drums. Let's go back over to the studio and pick it up with Kurt and everything that we have going on over there. And as we're... Uh running late on time to get everything in, I do want to talk about our cymbal stands. And I think, you know, the main message I think you're going to be getting out of this, it's impossible to go through every single detailed feature that we have, uh, is that we're sitting here all day, every day, thinking about these detailed features. We're doing everything we can to make the best possible products we can for you. And some things you want to look at here, and I think this maybe says the story for our cymbal stands, well, I'll touch on some of the features also, is that here is a, a cymbal stand that's, that's brand new. Here's a cymbal stand that's been around probably 10 or 15 years, I would say, uh, the 9700. And uh, what you want in a cymbal stand is one that lasts. So when you get a stand that's functional, everything works on it, and it's been in and out of cases on the road, really abused. I mean, it, you know, the plating, it's been hit. It's been, there's dings all over the castings and everything. But yet, functionally, it works perfectly. You don't see that when you walk into a store. You can't see that kind of quality. And there's a reason why we build it in. It has to do with the type of material we use in the tubing. It has to use with the type of material we use in the tube joints. It has to do with the plastic. We put plastic inserts inside the, the tube so that the stand doesn't rattle if you're in the studio. Uh, Here's another you know, no-brainer that only a drummer would think about if he was uh, building a cymbal stand for himself. What happens when you start taking it apart and you've got 10 stands? Which one does this go in? Which one does this go in? Every single stand that you, that you get, a 9,000 stand, has a package of labels in it. So you can label this 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. I mean, you can take a marker and do it too, but it looks a little bit funky. It's just a more professional way to make it happen. I think most of you know some of the patented features we have on our stand. We have a tilter up here, which allows you to uh, symbol seat, that allows you to adjust the space you have between your symbols. Jonathan Moffat gave me that idea when he was on the Michael Jackson tour because he wanted to grab his symbols and they were moving too much. Uh, how many times have you dropped the felt? Ah, it's not going to happen anymore. The felt is actually part of the actual wing screw itself. Uh, Simple, simply, 
Good. I mean, that's kind of a, a, a key that we talk about here. Keep it simple, keep it functional, keep it good. It doesn't have to be big and bulky and have 50 different adjustments to it in order to really work. And that's what we're looking for, something that just works for you. As you work your way down the stand and you take a look at the legs, something that we were first with also, the degree of tilt that you're going to put on the legs is going to have a, a lot to do with the angle of the height of the overall stand in, in initially. So if it's going to be that far down, it's going to be that high. If it's going to be up here, it's going to be that high. So you want to put a memory lock to adjust how long the legs go down, how far they go down before they hit. Again, little details, but things that are really, really important. Memory locks everywhere on the stand. You go from this one, our heavy duty stand, ugh, so this one, which weighs one-third this. This is the uh, 6700 symbol stand. Um, a lot of the same features, but really lightweight. Light is not cheap. Light is just light. It's still really good quality. And as we talked about with the pedals, we have a 7000 series uh, single brace, and we get into the 5000, the 3000. When you get all these stands and you look at uh, how you're setting up your drum set, and you think about uh, what do I do? Do I add another stand or do I go to a drum rack? Uh, let's talk to Quibus about that. And right now, take a look at uh, about a 15 second little clip here that is the rack versus the sand. Your traditional six piece kit set up with seven cymbal stands and two double tom stands. I'm thinking that's about the maximum amount of stands you would wanna have before you would seriously start thinking of a drum rack still supporting the same number of drums and the same number of cymbals. Another big part of considering whether you want to stay with stands or a drum rack is the portability. When you pack them up, here's what they look like. When you take the rack apart for a six-piece drum set holding up seven cymbal stands, it's considerably lighter than if you actually pack up each one of the individual stands. So let's talk to Quibus and see what he thinks about stands versus a rack. Thank you for joining us. Yes, of course. Oh, man, you've been in the studio a lot here this last yeah, week. Yeah, that's true. Uh, he was here with not only uh, the two second and third most viewed drummer on YouTube, but they, they played a great drum jam. And thank you for letting me keep your kit set up. And, yeah, it's, uh, been, it's been fun. And what do you think? When, when did you actually look at, because when you came here first, you had stands. Yes. What was the thing that convinced you or made you think you wanted to try a rack? What do you well, see as the advantage? The biggest thing for me was that I wanted to uh, get a permanent setup that I didn't have to worry about anymore. Because I'm very perfectionistic about that kind of stuff. Like, I want to set it up, and then if I move it to a different room, I want it to be exactly the same. Um, and with stands, that takes quite a while. Especially at that stage, I didn't, have, I didn't really have a rug that was kind of marked out. And so um, I remember uh, Steve Vega, he told me, well, then go for a rack, you know, because it's like a permanent setup. You get the setup you want, you memory lock everything into place, and then you never think about it again, which has been the case. We, we got the setup. I think I got the setup maybe uh, two years ago, three years ago almost, and uh, added the 8-inch Tom uh, about two years ago, and I haven't changed anything on it since. And if you're looking to buy a rack, basically there's two components here. He has the front and he has this two sides. So if you yeah. buy a front and one side, or a front and two sides, you've got exactly what he has here. Uh, probably has a few extra clamps, but it comes fully decked out. Again, you go onto the website, uh, dwdrums.com, and check it out. And uh, your career, yeah. Ventura Lights. Yeah, Very it's, exciting. It's been amazing. Um, I'm actually going to play you guys a song from my band's uh, first album, the debut album. We're called Ventura Lights, and the album's called Way Up Here, and I'm going to play a song called The Moment. The reason why I'm going to play it is because it's got a cool little uh, dubstep breakdown in the bridge, so watch it for that. But uh, yeah, just another thing that I quickly want to mention about, uh, about the rack before we, we move on to the song is something that I found really interesting is that if I switch from the performance series kit, which I play as well as the concept kit, um, I can just switch out the drums. I don't have to change anything on the rack because they're the same sizes. For me, that's a really good indication of exactly how permanent permanently things are fixed with regards to a rack and how easy it makes it. So if I change out between kits, it takes me five, seven, ten minutes because everything is so locked down, which has been amazing. And specifically with regards to uh, the recording process in the beginning of the year, it was really interesting to see if we wanted to change heads or change a drum around because everything is so locked down. It just made everything so And simple. you move it yourself often just by... It doesn't take you long to move Not it Not at all. Room. Take the cymbals off, uh, take the drums off, move it, put everything back exactly where it was, and within 
uh, 10 minutes, your setup is a, an exact replica, so you don't have to worry about it, which is great for somebody like me who's kind of a perfectionist about that kind of stuff. I'd love to hear you play. Cool, here we go. Here we go. Thank you so much, man. That was cool. really, really, really cool. Don, we're going to go ahead and just get into some questions, and I'm going to go ahead and ask you, and uh, we can go ahead and answer. we got Joseph from the Inland Empire who wants to know, uh, does DW have more ideas in mind for their uh, remote hi-hat stands? Uh, well, we're always looking at ways to change and, and adjust what we're doing. I guess I'd have to know what you're thinking about. Something that you might not be aware of, check out Terry Bozio's kit, and we have in our catalog the ability for you to use a remote hi-hat with a linkage. If you're going to keep it on the same side of your bass drum as your foot, then you wouldn't need a cable. And with the linkage, like a double pedal, it feels virtually exactly the same as a hi-hat. So if you're looking at having it be your only hi-hat and it's on that side, go for a hi-hat, one of our hi-hats with a linkage. We also have a hi-hat that has the, uh, uh, the actual remote pedal off to the side of it. So to the left side, the double pedal. So the hi-hat could be inside. So if your problem is your foot's out too far, just take a look at maybe using our hi-hat where the double pedal's on the outside of the hi-hat instead of on the inside of the hi-hat. All right. Uh, Alfonso from Puerto Rico says, does the snare stand DW9300 9, work to hold a 14 by 8 snare drum? Sure it does. Yeah, absolutely. I no. think I've even seen those holding a... Uh, sixteen-inch tom, I think. Before, Could, yes, wow. yes, we. It's 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 a it's 
it could virtually be a snare tom stand either way. Yeah, I've seen him. I've seen him used for everything. We got Steve from La Mesa. Uh, why doesn't DW allow or refuse to upgrade owners of five thousand or nine thousand to current DW spec? So I guess that's they're probably looking for like a trade-in program or. Uh, uh, well, it's interesting. Like if you look back through our history. Most of the improvements we've made, obviously the 9000 is a completely different pedal, so it's, it has its own mind. But uh, most of the improvements we've made, we tried to do as upgrades, so that you wouldn't have to go out and buy another pedal you know, all over again. So a lot of the things, if you have an older DW5000 pedal, you can upgrade it with a lot of the, the ball bearing rocker, a lot of things that would, would upgrade it uh, with a lot of the features that we have on the new, uh, newer 5000 pedal. But uh, to upgrade a 5,000 to a 9,000, they're two completely different cars. That would, be, that would be hard to do. This is actually a great question that I thought of while I was in the control room while you and Kurt were hanging out. And uh, that's, does DW make a bass drum pedal that is direct drive? And if not, is this something that you guys have given thought to? Oh, boy. How do I answer that question? Yes, we've thought about it a lot. Uh, and uh, no, we don't uh, make a direct drive pedal at this time. But all I can say is, you know, when you go on TV and you see breaking news, just keep maybe watching on the DW website for breaking news. And I will tell you, if we do come out with a direct drive pedal, uh, it's going to be more than just a direct drive pedal. Because we never do anything just because we want to do another one of those. I didn't make bass drum pedals. I didn't make stands. I didn't make anything that we make uh, because I wanted to make another one of them. If we couldn't do it and really improve it and put features into it that we feel makes it outstanding, uh, if there's one out there that works, we don't need to make another one just because we want to have it in the line. So um, I guess I'm kind of saying, do you think we're coming out with a direct drive pedal, Kurt? No. Oh, well, he's... But, uh, you know... <laughs> I think Kurt was standing there. To, he was staring off at the t ceiling tiles over Bird, there first. Birds do fly by every now and then. I don't know. Okay. Um, so anyway, we, we, uh, uh, yes, we are definitely more than thinking about it, and I'll leave it at that. Um, I, did, I did see Rich down the hall the other day. Yes. Well, don't, say anything, no, don't say anything. No, don't say anything. All right. You know, in, in, right. in my years of dealing with DW, one thing I've learned is that you guys don't do something just to do it. You'd make sure that when you do it, it's practical and it has a reason. So... Um, does DW have a CD or other information on how to adjust the pedal tension on the 3000 hi-hat stand? Boy, um, it wouldn't be any, I mean, it's, it's, it's mechanically a little bit different. Uh, the thing you'd want to do from a sitting position is just loosen the, the drum key screw and raise it up and then adjust it. But um, if you have any problems or concerns about anything like that, hit up our customer service department. You know, we have an award-winning customer service department. Uh, they're players, and they could answer that question for you. Don't know exactly what you would be looking for and what, what confusion you might have in, in being able to adjust it, but we're there to help you anytime you have questions about anything. One thing I've always loved about your guys' company, and I've been dealing with you guys now for seven years, is that every time I call, a person picks up the phone. I never get an automated service. No robots. I, nope. I call, I get a person who sends me right over to the right guy. Um, you know, there's a lot of good people at your guys' company, and you guys always do pick up the phone. Something great about it. So real quick, before we wrap it up here, I just want to announce the winners. We, are we Don, do, do you want to go ahead and take we the We do have there? some winners. You want to sit back there? Because I think we're going to maybe on. have a little surprise play us out, which you oh, guys no. don't even know about. Uh, oh. We have uh, the first place Calvin. winner. First place winner, and he gets the 9002 double pedal. Uh, Michael Scott. Michael, Great. congratulations. <laughs> Big stuff, huh? Second place we have uh, Ryan Hurst. Looks like Ryan Hurst is in, in second there. Right. And in third place we have Juan Pablo. Uh, and in order, uh, Michael said 78 patents. Ryan said 72. Pablo said looks like 63. 63. And uh, the correct number was, I have it here on my card, 89 patents that we've actually wow. been issued. So no, I, I uh, didn't. I didn't even guess half of that. Yes. So. <laughs> yes. How, many, how many do you have on your name personally? Uh, I'm fortunate to have about 37 patents under my name uh, through wow. through the course. And, you know, and those are things that you know we're really proud of because it's things that we think um, not only help set us apart, but it's things that we think improves the quality of of your life too. So. I want to thank you for inviting us here hey, to do well, this yeah, webinar. You know, I, I, I'd great. like to extend the thanks to Drum Channel for having us. Uh, this yeah. is their beautiful facility, and they're very courteous to let us use it. Of course, DW, Kurt, 
And uh, Co- uh, Cobus? Coibus? That's close enough. Quibus is very close. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm trying, man. I'm trying. <laughs> Quibus. I've, I've been in the States for quite a while. My standards are super low. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. Well, thanks, everybody, for attending this uh, Music Mentor Series webinar. Kurt? I think, I think we're going to have them, you know, that's what happens when you get two drummers together here oh, in the no. drum channel studio. We'll fade this out here really soon, but maybe play a, play a little bit of groove. Play us okay. out, guys. Here we go. One, two, one, two.